Welcome to Electron Online. Now in previous videos we've looked at vapor pressure of solvents and solutions in terms of a solute added to the solvent that is not volatile. So the, sol the solute was not volatile, did not produce any appreciable vapor pressure of its own. But there are situations where both the solvent and the solute, once it's dissolved in the solute, they both will cause a vapor pressure to exist on their own. And so combined, there'll be a combined vapor pressure. And so there we have to look at things a little bit differently. So what we have here is a chart that shows the combined vapor pressure of both the solvent and the solute. Now here is a curve or a straight line representing the pressure of the solvent as a function of the fraction, the molar fraction of the solvent. And then this curve right here, and then noted yet here, that would be the pressure caused by the solute. And of course, since the amount of the solute present is equal to 1 minus the amount of the solvent present, we can then say that as a function of the amount of solute present, here we can see that this is the vapor pressure of the uh, solute in the sol uh, solution. And so the sum of the two will then become equal to the total pressure. Now this isn't an ideal case because there's a lot of cases where there'll be not quite this kind of curve. There'll be a little difference on that. We'll look at that in some future videos. But right now we just assume that there's an ideal case here. And the ideal case is typically where the molecular forces between the solvent and the solute molecules are the same as the molecular forces between the solvent molecules and the molecular forces between the sol solute forces. Uh, solute molecules. So as long as the forces between the molecules are all the same, regardless if it's a solvent or solute, we have therefore an ideal case. Now in a lot of cases that's not going to be that way, but if it is, let's go ahead and take a look at it so we understand it. So how do we find the total pressure? Well, it turns out that the total pressure is simply going to be the pressure caused by the solvent, and let's call that the pressure from A. So we'll associate the letter A with the solvent, plus the pressure of the solute and we'll call that B. So it's simply a sum of the two and you can see that. So you can see that if this is the pressure of the solvent at this concentration and this is the pressure of the solute at this concentration added together that will therefore be the total pressure. So it's simple, simply a, a sum of the two. Notice that if the solvent is 100% of the solution then of course we the pressure there will be equal to what the solvent pressure will be or the, the vapor pressure will be of the solvent at that particular temperature and if the whole uh, solution is nothing but solute then of course the vapor pressure will be represented by the pressure the vapor pressure of the solute so that's pretty straightforward now how do we find this equation well it turns out just like before that the pressure of the solvent is equal to the molar concentration or the fractional concentration of the solvents, so that would be x of the solvent, let's call it x sub a, times the pressure, the, the vapor pressure, if all you had is solvent. The same for b, we could say that the pressure caused by the solute, the vapor pressure caused by the solute, is equal to the concentration of the solute times the <coughs> uh, pressure of the solute if that was the only substance in your solution. And of course, realizing that x sub b, which is the uh, molar fraction or the, the fractional content of the solute, is equal to 1 minus the fractional content of the solvent. So we can say from here that p sub b can be written as 1 minus x sub a, which is the fractional concentration of the solvent, times the pressure at b when that's the only substance we have. And then we can plug that into the equation here. So the total pressure is simply going to be equal to what we call x sub a times p sub a. So this is the fractional concentration of the solvent times the pressure of the solvent when that's all we have, plus the fractional concentration of the solute, and I'll write it like this, times the pressure that we would have the the vapor pressure, what will we have if all we had was the solute? And this then becomes the total pressure <clears throat> in the solution. So pretty straightforward, and again, that's in the ideal case when the intermolecular forces are the same between the solvent molecules, the solute molecules, and between each other. How do you do that?